What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Iron Heart Podcast, the podcast about film, TV, and marketing. My name is Lungile, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about working on a documentary feature film project as a video editor. Okay, so uh, I hope you're excited as I am, and I'm super excited to talk about this documentary feature that I worked on, how I worked on it and how I found the experience. Okay, so if you've ever been interested in working on a documentary feature film, uh, maybe I might drop some tips or some things that you could also learn. Okay, so I was approached by a producer to work on a documentary feature film, and it was, a per- it was about a person who has a very big affinity to animals. He loves animals. That's as much as I can say without giving it away. And when I had to work on this documentary, I was given a hard drive with content and it had like eight to ten interviews where they're talking about the person. It was like one of those profile documentaries where they talk about the person's childhood, how he started liking animals and how he loved them, how he grew up to be a, uh, a teenager, loving them, his childhood and how, uh, leading to up to what he, what he does now. His job is dealing with animals. And it was really interesting, you know, the process of cutting this documentary, the story, you know, first when I got the drive, the footage was like around two terabytes of footage. So it was a lot of footage and the footage was shot in 4K in a, on a C300 Mark III. Some of the footage was raw, so it was really, really heavy. Like if you ever cutting a documentary and the timeline ends up being like two hours and it's 4K, you really, really need a badass computer. You know, if you have a really, really badass computer, then you'll be good. But if you are not, you're going to have to make proxies, which is what I had to do. So by the time I got the footage, I had to uh, make proxies. So what making proxies is making uh, substitute files that are smaller and so we can be able to edit it. So I had to transcode all the footage and make 720p proxies so that when I edit the timeline and I've got a three hour timeline of like, footage my computer can work fast i can edit really nicely look i can edit 4k but once you go to 4k and it's a two hour cut it really like chows your 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 memory you're a little bit slower plus if it's raw footage you really have to get like a really badass computer to work on something like that and not have problems okay so what i did is i put copied the footage into a four terabyte hard drive and then I made proxies, okay? And I made proxies for a very long time and finally when I was done, then I started logging the footage, started making the cuts and my first cut was around two and a half hours. And what I needed to do was to cut, cut, cut down the project to like 60 minutes. So it was a lot of watching footage, trying to make the story make sense, make sure it has a beginning, middle and an end, you know, make sure there was tension, make sure it, 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 it was also interesting, I had to find music. There was also a lot of B-roll and a lot of re, uh, recreated content. I mean, the documentary was gonna be done, but I would have a very nice first cut and then I was gonna give it to the director who's gonna shoot more B-roll or get stock footage to help tell a story better. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I know that's very brief, but I just wanted to talk about working on a documentary feature film. Uh, it took me like three weeks to cut the, I know I just made another video about how long a series takes, but this this first cut of this documentary took me three weeks. Obviously, projects are different. Some projects have bigger budgets, some projects have medium budgets. But um, yeah, that's what happened with this documentary. I cut it for like three weeks and I finally uh, managed to give the first cut to the director. Anyway, it was a really, really interesting process. I learned a lot of things. Um, one thing that I did learn is that, you know, you really need to, when you work on long form stuff and you're a really good computer, and if you work on long form stuff, it just helps to make proxies, you know, because proxies help you edit better. Um, it also helps you if you work on an SSD, if you have a computer with an SSD, that's great. Internal SSD, or maybe like a four terabyte SSD, or you have an external SSD, you're just gonna edit like smoothly. So. Something that I noticed is that every time I'm taking on a long form project, I need to have like an external SSD that's like four terabytes just for the project and all the files, just so I can edit nicely, I can be able to edit between different computers and also to make proxies. I know taking making proxies takes long, but 
in the long run, it helps you become faster because dealing with 4K footage that, with, that makes up a two hour timeline can really, really crush your computer unless you have one of those new MacBooks. Um, but I feel like they will also choke because working on long form is really, really taxing on your machine. So it's not like working on a short film content where it's like a commercial that's 60 seconds, two minutes. It just helps making proxies. Um, anyway, I hope you like find this video interesting, helpful. Uh, I know I like talking about these things. Maybe you get to learn something, get to pick up something. But yeah, anyway, I'm finding myself really, really liking working on documentaries. You know, they're really, really interesting. And they take a lot of time and it'll take a lot of time of crafting. But yeah, anyway, hope you find this video valuable. And if you like this video, please uh, drop a comment, uh, hit the like button, hit the bell button, and uh, oh, so, so and hit the bell button so you can be notified every time I drop a new video. And yeah, drop, drop comments. Let me know what other content you like, you'd like to see. And if you listen to this on a podcast, you can rate us, drop a comment, whether it's on iTunes or Spotify, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, until next time, guys, this has been the Ironheart Podcast, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.